we'll discuss about addressing modes now what is an addressing mode and why do we use this addressing modes for example if you are writing a program program itself includes instructions and uh, if the if the processor is executing any instruction <coughs> then it has to fetch the data from different sources now that source might be a register it might be an immediate value or it might be from the memory location or it might be from the ports now there are different sources from where the processor has to fetch the data so we have to tell the processor where actually the data is located now the way of locating that data by the processor is nothing but addressing mode now there are some addressing modes which are supportable by this 8051 so we'll discuss what are those okay now initially we'll see what is an addressing mode so as i told you there uh, these various ways of accessing data so various ways of accessing data or uh, the way of locating an operand is nothing but an addressing mode and the data might be in memory or it might be an immediate value or it might be in a register okay now let us see the different uh, addressing modes which are supported by 8051 and uh, there are totally five addressing modes immediate register direct register indirect and then indexed so we'll discuss each and every one so initially we'll start with immediate addressing mode now before uh, before discussing about this immediate addressing mode uh, we have we should know uh, what is the format of an instruction how an instruction would be so an instruction contains an opcode and then operand fields there might be any number of operand fields okay in general uh, there are four uh, four types of instructions like one operand instruction two operand instruction three operand instruction and then four operand instruction okay so uh, here in case of 8051 it supports only uh, two two types of uh, instructions that is one operand and then two operand instructions if it is a two operand instruction then there will be one opcode there will be one operand one and then operand two okay operand 2 will be acting as a source and operand 1 will be acting as a destination okay now uh, in case of immediate addressing mode the data value is included within the instruction or the data value is given as an immediate value within the instruction okay <coughs> the source operand field contains this data value <coughs> so let us see how uh, how we are going to use this immediate addressing mode now the source operand is a constant when the instruction is a symbol the operand comes immediately after the opcode so the source operand will be containing an immediate value and that immediate value should be preceded with a pound sign so whenever the assembler uh, executes or whenever the assembler comes across this uh, pound sign then it is going to treat that data value as a immediate data okay let us see some of the examples for this <coughs> Here, move a comma uh, hash twenty five, and then move r four comma hash sixty two, and move d p t a comma hash four five two one. Now, as you can see here, uh, these data values are preceded with a pound symbol. Now, the assembler is going to treat this twenty five as a data. Okay. Now, this twenty five will be stored inside this accumulator as well as r four register, and then d p t a will be stored with four five two one. Okay. now let us see the second addressing mode that is register addressing mode now in this register addressing mode the value will be stored inside a register and that register uh, will be given as a source operand in the instruction okay let us see how to do that so register addressing mode involves the use of registers to hold the data so here one register would be holding the data and that register will be given as a source operand in the instruction okay and here the source and destination registers size must be same okay or else uh, if the source size is 8 bits then the destination must be uh, equal to or less than the equal to or greater than the source operand or source register okay and uh, here we cannot use the banked registers uh, as uh, as source as well as destination both at the same time okay <coughs> let us see some examples here so here move a comma r0 i am not using both of the banked registers as source and destination why because we cannot use both the banked registers as source as well as as destination at the same time so that is why there should be one banked register and uh, there should be one any other register except the other banked registers okay so move a comma r0 now this instruction is going to copy the content which is present in r0 into a register 
move r2 comma a where again it is doing the same copies the content which is present in a into this r2 register and then add a comma r5 now it is going to perform the addition operation between a and r5 and the result would be stored inside again a register <coughs> now let us see how to access the memory uh, by using various addressing modes that is the first uh, way of accessing the memory is direct addressing mode where the address of the operand will be given as an immediate value in the instruction without the pound sign okay let us see that there are 128 bytes of ram in the 8051 as we know that and it is divided into three partitions like 0021f register bands 2022f bit addressable area and 3027f which is nothing but a general purpose ram or scratch pad ram okay now <coughs> all these ram addresses or all these ram locations are accessed with the help of their addresses okay and uh, we have to include that address as a source operand without the pound sign okay if you are if you are using this pound sign then the assembler treats it as a data value if you are not using this pound sign in front of a data value then it would be treated as a address inside the ram okay let us see some examples like move r0 comma 40h now the assembler is going to treat this 40 as an address but not as a data so whatever the value that is present in this 40 will be copied into r0 register and move 56 comma a where the contents of accumulator will be copied into 56 location okay 56 memory location dptr comma pound symbol as you can see is a pound symbol therefore now the assembler is going to treat this 4521 as a data value but not as an address therefore directly this 4521 would be copied into dptr in the same way dph with 45 again it's a data value and dpl with 21 which is again a data value so without a pound sign will be treated as an address and with pound sign will be treated as a data value okay as you can see here r0 comma data address data address comma some register and then data address comma so these are the three ways how we can uh, use this direct addressing mode okay <coughs> now register bank let us see the same uh, direct addressing with the help of this register banks okay so here i am using move r4 comma hash 100 now this 100 is a data value which is stored inside this r4 register now what i am doing here is i am accessing this r4 register with its address that is move a comma 4 okay address of this r4 which is in bank 0 the default bank is 0 therefore address of this r4 is 4 so i am directly giving the address of r4 as 04 in the instruction therefore the content which is present in 04 location will be copied into a register or accumulator register okay we can write by using the address or else we can also write the same instruction with the help of the register name that is r4 okay so as you are uh, giving here the address as r4 and the selected bank is 0 therefore the content which is present in r4 inside bank 0 will be stored inside this or will be copied into the accumulator register okay <coughs> so all the banked registers can be accessed with their names or else by their addresses okay now what i'm doing here is i'm selecting register bank 1 and uh, let us see what happens now so set b is the instruction which is used on a single bit so set b rs0 which makes rs02 1 to initialize it to 1 now move r4 comma hash 100 now this 100 would be treated as a data value and that data value will be stored inside this r4 register now when i say move a comma 4 now as the bank uh, selected is bank 1 therefore uh, but this address uh, represents represents r4 register which is inside bank 0 therefore in uh, the default value would be 0 now a is initialized with 0 but if you say a comma r4 as the selected bank is 1 therefore the content which is present in r4 inside bank 1 will be copied into a register okay so here we can uh, we can uh, uh, we can use the addresses as well as we can use the register names but we have to look at the bank which is selected okay now let us see uh, the sfrs as we have already discussed regarding these sfrs okay so aab psw and dpt are all these are the sfrs and all these sfrs are located from the locations uh, addresses that is 80h2 ffh okay and these are the sfrs that we have uh, and uh, the sfrs which are given with or which are uh, represented with a star or asterisk 
all these are bit addressable registers bit addressable in the sense they can be accessed each uh, single bit can be accessed without uh, without modifying the contents of the other bits now here I have, uh, I have written one uh, thing that is set B A.1 which means I am just initializing uh, the first position bit inside the accumulator that is A.1 this bit position without, without affecting the other bits okay without modifying the contents of the other bits now let us see an example write a code to send 55 H to ports P1 and P2 using their names and their addresses okay so initially we will use their names and then later on we will use their addresses so I am using this uh, immediate addressing mode where I am storing the value 55 into accumulator. After that, I am using register addressing mode where the content of A is copied into P1 and content of A is copied into P2. Okay, now again I am storing 55 into 55 data value into accumulator and then I am storing this uh, content of A into P1 and P2 by using their addresses. Okay. Now, how to uh, how to perform some operations on the stack? As I told you, that stack is an area which is inside the RAM and it is mainly used for holding data or else address. Okay. Addresses are nothing but the written addresses. Okay. We'll discuss what are those written addresses. So here uh, we can only perform two operations on two operations on the stack, like push and pop. Push is nothing but inserting a data element into the onto the stack, and pop is nothing but removing the data element from the stack. Okay, and the syntax of push and pop instructions are push address pop address. Push address indicates that the value which is present in that particular address in the specified address should be inserted onto the stack, and pop address indicates uh, the top of stack should be copied into or should be moved from the stack to the specified address okay let us see some examples show the code to push r5 r6 and a onto the stack and then pop them back uh, into r2 r3 and b so we want in this manner initially we have to push r5 r6 and a onto the stack okay so initially we have to push r5 and then r6 and then a now the top of stack would be a okay and then we have to remove those elements and copy those elements into or uh, move those elements into B register, R2 register and then R3 register. Okay, let us see how to do that. Initially, we have to push R5, but the address of R5 is 5. Okay, by default, the bank which is selected is 0. Therefore, the address of this uh, R5 is 5. Okay, so push 5. So, whenever we write this instruction, then what happens here is the content which is present in this 5, which is nothing but R5, will be pushed onto the stack. And then, you have to push R6, therefore push 06 and then push 0E0H. Okay, this is the address of register accumulator or register A. Okay, now as we have pushed R5, R6 and A, now we have to retrieve the data elements from the stack or we have to remove the data elements from the stack. For that we have to use the instruction pop. Okay, so initially the top of stack is nothing but uh, the value of A. Okay, so that should be copied into B register. Therefore, the address of B is 0f0 therefore pop 0f0 okay now it is going to uh, move the data element that is uh, which is on the top of stack into b register now the top of stack would be pointing to r6 top of stack is here is nothing but r6 now whatever the value present in r6 would be popped and stored inside this 0 to location now here 0 to location is nothing but r2 okay and then pop 03 which is nothing but the top of stack is now r5 that is uh, moved on to 0 3 location which is nothing but r3 register so this is how we can uh, use push and pop instructions on the stack now let us see register indirect addressing mode now in this case uh, the address of the operand will be stored inside the register and that register will be given as a source operand with uh, with uh, with a symbol that is at the rate now when now we place this at the rate symbol in front of a register now the assembler is going to treat the value which is present in this r0 or inside this register as an address okay let us see so in the register indirect addressing mode a register is used as a pointer to the data okay so it means now register would be pointing to a data element which is in the memory 
okay that is the register holds the ram address of the data only registers r0 and r1 can be used to hold the address of an operand located in ram so we can only use r0 and r1 for, for storing the address and uh, both of these registers if we are using for uh, storing the address they must be preceded with a symbol at the read so that the assembler treats uh, the value present in this uh, registers as an address of the ram address inside the ram okay let us see one example so move 20h comma hash 100 now here we are moving this immediate value 100 into 20h address okay into 20h address so here 20h is now loaded with 64 the hexadecimal value of 100 okay later on move r0 comma hash 20h it means it means now this 20 is treated as a data value and that is stored inside this r0 register okay now move a comma at the rate r0 now it means that value at the address okay value at r0 address which is nothing but here r0 is holding now 20h now whatever the value that is present in 20h that should be copied into a register okay so here now this 20h is holding 64 therefore this 64 is copied into a register okay so here at the rate represents value at the address okay let us see one more example move b comma hash 80 now this uh, 80 is treated as a immediate value and that is stored inside the register now move r1 comma hash 31 now it is again treated as a data value and that is stored inside r1 now move at the rate r1 comma b it means the value which is present in b that is 80 should be copied into the address which is present inside this r1 now what is the address present inside the r1 that is 31 so 80h is copied into 31 address location now let us see one more example write a program to copy the value 55h into ram memory locations 40h to 45h using direct addressing mode and register indirect addressing mode without a loop so initially you will see how to uh, write this 55 how to copy this 55 into these locations that is 40 to 45 h so initially i am using here move a comma hash 55 where i am moving the content that is the immediate value 55 into register a okay then move 40 h comma a so i am using a direct address here so it means the contents which are present inside this a that is 55 h is copied into the location 40 h and then 41 42 43 44 are again stored with the same value that is 55 h Now we have to use register indirect addressing mode without a loop so register indirect in the sense we have to use either we have to use r0 or else r1 with a preceded symbol that is at the rate okay so initially i'm moving the content 55 into a and then i'm loading the initial address that is 40 as a data value into r0 now i've written move at the rate r0 comma a the contents of accumulator gets copied into the address inside the r0 now address inside the r0 is 40 therefore 40h is now loaded with 55 data value so 40h is now loaded with 55 data value later on i have incremented this r0 now r0 is uh, pointing to 41 okay therefore 41 is again loaded with 55 so in the same way the other locations are also loaded with the same value 55 now let us see the last addressing mode that is index addressing mode and this addressing mode is mainly used for accessing rom okay so inside the rom we can store uh, lookup tables so if you want to access those lookup tables then we have to use this index addressing mode and the syntax for this index addressing mode is move c where c is nothing but code okay move c a comma accumulator that must be a, a compulsory uh, at the rate a plus and then a register and this register might uh, might be a dptr or else it might be a program counter okay any of these registers can be used but not the other registers or like banged registers or any other registers okay so here index addressing mode is widely used in accessing data elements of lookup tables entries located in program rom space of 8051 a lookup table is a rom block where the data is given previously the instruction used for purpose is MOC. so where we were going to move the code which is present inside the rom into any of the selected register okay now we can use either dptr or as program counter okay now what happens here is initially uh, the value present in dptr is added with 
the value present in accumulator and then as uh, there is an at the rate symbol which indicates that value at the address okay value at this particular address will be moved again into the accumulator register okay so this is how we are going to use index addressing mode for accessing the rom locations okay as you can see one example move c a comma at the rate a plus bp bptr where these two values uh, are added and it would be treated as an address and that uh, that uh, the value present at that particular address would be stored inside this a okay so this is how we are going to use this move c instruction along with the index addressing mode thank you